Hello, welcome. I'm Jay. This is SmartHelping.com. We've got an electric vehicle charging station deployment model uh, for EV charging station providers to build out. It works for very large organizations, very small organizations. Uh, whatever kind of scale you want to model, this is perfect. Uh, I'll go through each tab high level and then I'll get into the details. Uh, so generally, Global Control tab, we got some general assumptions about timing, uh, average days per month, deployment. This is a main tab where we're going to define everything about uh, scale. Subscriptions, also option for subscribers. Don't forget about this top part here to define price and if you're going to have uh, subscriptions. Uh, OPEX, most important thing here is probably the cost per unit per month for the charging stations. Um, CapEx, you just got to find useful life, staffing, if you're really big, couple loan options, cap table startup cost terminal value, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, executive summary, discount of cash flow analysis, all this stuff updates, visuals, we got a really a lot of cool visuals I'll get into uh, in detail, and the monthly uh, pro forma detail. We can see how everything kind of comes together and all of this stuff will update on its own as you adjust all the tabs in yellow's inputs so let's get into it um i'll do an example scenario so we'll call this company uh ev charging llc we're going to run it for let's say we only want to do it for um 84 months I'm going to include a terminal value, which is going to be based on a trailing 12 month EBITDA. All this other stuff is going to fill from other tabs. We'll do an income tax rate of 25%, long term per capita gains tax 10%, and average days per month, which is used for the capacity assumptions for um, operations, is just 365 divided by 12 months to get the days per month. We have check summary here to make sure all the income statement, balance sheet, all the different statements all match. These always will be zero. Um, so let's get into deployment. So here, we'll start very simple. Let's say I wanted to deploy in month uh, three. I wanted to do one level one charger. So that's going to cost me $5,300 in total to deploy. I have this months until operational to account for the fact that you'll usually have, especially with the DC fast chargers, it could take four to four to six or seven months to get these things between when you pay for it and then when it actually starts making revenue because you've got to go through a lot of different processes for installation, permits, all kinds of stuff. Um, so there will be a delay for level two and level uh, DC fast chargers. Okay, and that's where you can define here. Um, and like if I put month one, one is the month it's actually deployed. So, and the cost happens. Uh, if I put two here, that means the revenue starts one month after it was actually paid for and so on. Uh, so, We'll do uh, one of these level one chargers and you can adjust these costs in installation costs over time. And this is, there's a lot of reasons why I allowed an input for each month as like a monthly tranche. You can, you can scale out at different locations uh, over time in different locations might result in different installation costs. It could also result in different kilowatt hour pricing. It could also result in different um, car counts per day, um, as well as different usages, expected usages per day per session for the cars, um, average kilowatt hours used, and uh, your costs as the provider might be different in different areas. So you can adjust all of these assumptions over time. So we do one unit deployed, $5,000 cost. We're gonna charge 35 cents a kilowatt hour. 
we're saying there's only one car on average per day using this machine or charging uh, station and every time they use it we're going to use nine kilowatt hours now to figure out the kilowatt hours used per session this will help you so what you can do is put the kilowatts of the station um, level one's usually lower level two can be a little bit higher and level uh, dc fast can be quite higher you know, 150 kilowatt machine so here we're saying 1.4 kilowatts tapering means you don't get the full kilowatts the whole time so let's say there's 80 percent tapering and let's say on average these are going to charge for eight hours let's say it's uh you know chargers that are by uh an office parking lot or something so they charge for while they're at work um so that would equal 8.96 kilowatt hours per session in this case and the way we're getting to that is doing the kilowatts of the machine times 80 percent times the total hours if this were a bigger machine let's say this was a 10 kilowatt machine you're now looking at 64 kilowatt hours per session because that goes to eight percent eighty percent tapering so you're getting eight kilowatts for eight hours eight times eight is 64. so this is a little helper you can plug in to figure out what data you want to put into this section here uh, you've also got cost per kilowatts and this is this is your cost you're paying to the utility companies as you provide electricity um, this is an overall cost that you can do for the subscribe subscribers because they're set up a little bit differently um, but in this scenario you basically have the amount of available kilowatts that are left over after all your one-time users have used them and you can define a percentage of that leftover amount that is going to be uh, available for subscribers just because you can't have unlimited subscribers you're going to have to have it's based on how many um, machines you deploy over time and how much kilowatt hours are available so a percentage of that can be used for subscribers and then for subscribers you can define uh, monthly pricing per tier uh, the limit in kilowatt hours that they get per month per tier and then the percentage of their max limit that they actually use and then the percentage of total numbers that are at each tier and then once we know all of that information we can estimate the count uh, in this case let's say um, we have a uh, 748 kilowatt hours let's say 100 percent used you see then and, and based on if you if they use less and we're ba we're saying that um this utilization column here is essentially defining how many subscribers you have because this against the total amount that they actually use is going to just drop right into how many their subscribers actually are so if this were less say 50 percent those numbers go down and so forth and that'll, that'll be your second uh potential revenue stream in here there's not they're not subscribing to level one two or three it's just you have a total amount of kilowatts that are left and then you have three types of subscribers that use different levels of kilowatt hours um so if we go back to our deployment so we've got a cost here um price per kilowatt hour average cars per day and we talked about average kilowatt hours used per session so now if you see and i'll show you this on the monthly detail but here uh, our revenue should be, you know, one unit times average of one car a day times the days in the month, 3.1417 times um, kilowatt hours used per session times our price per kilowatt hour. So here we should be getting $95 a month in revenue. So if we go over to our monthly detail, let's see where is that at um here it is it's rounding what if i take out the decimals 9581 a month 9581 so you can see those numbers match and if i were to say double the or say five times the charger installations now that number goes up by five to 479 you see now it's up to 479 here as well um 
Our direct cost for kilowatt hour transmitted, so what we're paying the utility company is $205, which is based on the same calculation, except now instead of cost, we're doing the or price, we're doing the cost. Is the 205. So this is just to show you the logic works, and then you could scale this however you want. So let's say you added five of these a, a month for a while. Um, you see now we're, we're scaling up, revenue is going up and up and up. And you can see on a per unit basis, I put a calculation here, average profit per unit. So it's doing your total revenue per unit against your total cost per unit. Total cost or average cost in, per total unit is here. The difference of those two times your total active units would actually result in your total gross profit, which um, if you see here, so if I had revenue, this minus my cost per unit, $5, which is, which is this number. And I can multiply this by however many units exist. In this case, five, $24, there's my actual gross profit. So all this ties nicely together and I've checked all of this a lot to make sure all the calculations are correct. So all you gotta do is drop in your assumptions about your strategy for scaling and see what the financials look like. Um, so this is showing you on the monthly detail your active units, the maximum capacity that you can provide, the actual utilization, and your maximum capacity is gonna be based on these numbers up here, however many hours uh, you're operational per day by charger type, the total kilowatts, that the machines are and however many there actually are. And all of that will give you your max capacity. And then usage is gonna be driven by however many kilowatts are used on average per session and the average car count per day. These two mainly drive uh, usage. Oh, and again, obviously car count per day per unit. So this, this and the, the actual units that exist give you your usage uh oh on subscribers there's also this calculation it helps you see okay here's how many available kilowatt hours there are after i've plugged in my numbers i'm using in this case 27 percent of the total kilowatt hours and there's 73 percent available this is also broken down into kilowatts um and active units versus deployed in case there was an offset here. Like if, if it took me three months to get these online, you can see revenue and, and there's an offset. Uh, if we go to monthly detail, um, active units here in month five, but I actually had costs down here in, uh, in CapEx in month three. This 26,750 would be this first number here for the first deployment cost. Put this back to one. Um, and this all works. Let's say I had, uh, I was going to do um, 10 level two chargers a day and then maybe 50 DC fast chargers a day. So, pretty big operation. I was going to do that for the first 31 months. Um, and like I said, I'm running for 84 months. Now the, the DC fast chargers were the only ones I could find that had a useful lifespan of less than 10 years. They were saying, you know, some could last seven years because they're, they're, um, they're faster. It's more wear and tear on them. They're usually used more, um, but they put out a lot more energy and you're, you're making a lot more with these ones. You can see the, uh, the kilowatt hours per session and the cars per day per unit are usually quite high on those ones. It will depend on where it is, but um, you can see here if we put in these numbers, now the monthly detail, our revenues are going up quite fast. Uh, you see here we're already up to $600,000 by month eight, uh, which is when the DC chargers come online. They're being deployed earlier, but they actually are active after, uh, I believe, six month lead time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So once that comes on, you got a lot of capacity coming online and uh, utilization of kilowatt hours. So this is what you're selling 
essentially in unit or kilowatt hours and uh, you're making here $1,600 a unit a month and we've got 120 units so pretty good gross profit here's your direct cost um, 195,000 gross profit you've also got some fixed overheads here um, this would be for corporate overheads you can scale those costs here in the OPEX tab uh, based on the fine start month. And here you put in the monthly cost by year. You could change it each year, but it's the monthly cost. Um, <clears throat> any costs related directly to the percentage of revenue. This could be like credit card fees. Um, direct costs, again, this is important. This would be like for every unit, you might have repairs and maintenance costs for months, inspections, testing, parts replacement, insurance. So you're putting in what that expected average monthly cost is per unit per month here. That totals at the bottom, pops into here, and you can define how that might change over time as well uh, if you think the expenses will rise. There's also a staffing tab, uh, and this is more, I mean, you will probably never use this much. This have to be a really large operation, but... Um, you might be adapting this model to some other business that has a lot of staffing. So, because there's a lot of, uh, this logic is very dynamic and useful. Um, but you can put in the start month number of the staff type, the count, their monthly cost, the growth of that cost over time, and payroll tax and benefits over here individually for each uh, staff type. So that's a robust section. Um, you've also got loans here, regular P&I loans, if you want to take out debt to deploy your units you've got two separate loans that could have different start months uh the amount you're le uh, taking out borrowing the term the interest rate now that section will come down here you'll see in other items the operating loan proceeds for the two loan types there's principal and interest payments um, total loan proceeds total principal total interest total debt service and debt service covered ratio which is your debt service against EBITDA. Uh, you can see CapEx getting quite large here. So this is where you can really see, okay, I've just, I've deployed 50 of these units a month. It's costing me 4.5 million for each deployment. It takes six months for the units to come online once they're deployed. So what does this look like? Well, if we look at our distribution, you can see there's a quite a big CapEx here, $89 million. Um, so you pay all that up front, then you've got some operations, so we've got some cash inflow coming here. And overall, this project, uh, after an exit in year seven, with a multiple of 6x EBITDA, we're looking at a 35.5% IRR, which is pretty solid. And here's the cash flow stream that we're measuring. We've also got group uh, investor and owner groups, um, which you can define here on the cap table. This is just your, your minimum equity requirement will automatically populate here. And then from that, you can define who it's coming from. Now, I just usually use this last overflow as, you know, if you zeroed everything out and put everything into this one line, this is just your whole project. Um, but if you were going to get investors and, and also contribute some yourself as an operator, you could put maybe any, any amount you put in here will reduce the fill amount. Um, or you could just rate, you could enter exactly in the amount you're going to raise here based on this fill, uh, or based on this total and define the percentage of profits each group gets. So, you know, let's say the investors are getting 20%, owners are getting 80 operators, and maybe they're going to contribute a little bit more, maybe 5 million. Okay, and then you can see their IRRs for each individual section here. Based on the cash flows. Uh, and yeah, just make sure this top section, this plus this column should always equal this total, whatever that is. And then this these percentages plus these percentages should always add up to 100% in total. You've also got some one-time startup costs here to account for things like maybe consultants, some legal fees, anything that's happening right at the beginning um, before operations. And terminal value here, we can define of the uh, exit 
multiple, how much of the proceeds are going towards CapEx versus extraordinary income, which is just a tax thing, and it will affect this value on the CapEx. Uh, all this stuff is obviously depreciable uh, for your um, charging stations. And we'll look at the book value at sale against the, the value we assign of the total proceeds based on that percentage and terminal value. And then there we can figure out a net gain or loss, which populates down here. And also on the income statement and the end month, whatever end month that is. Here we're on month 84. So that 236 million will be taxed at, I believe, 10%. Yeah, 10%. Um, and then that all flows through. So you've got income statement here. This is a more formal view of your, your revenue, your cost, gross profit, OPEX, EBITDA, interest, depreciation, uh, taxable income, net income. That all flows through. You've also got a balance sheet here that's fully integrated, and this goes dynamic, uh, dynamic based on the assumptions. You can see we stopped at month 84. We could also go to operate till month 120 and look at this all extend out. Pretty cool here. So now look at the income statement. We're going all the way to the end. Now you can see operations kind of fall off. Well, depreciation falls off, um, but our our revenue is going down every month. And why is that? Because these DC fast chargers we deployed have an 84 month useful life. So they are going to start going offline, which is, uh, you can see that happening in the matrix three tab here. You see the count dropping off after 84 months or whatever and you can obviously change this based on your data and scenarios uh, that you're doing um, this does not have to be 84 these don't have to be 120 these are all editable all the yellow cells are editable to whatever you want um, okay so yeah in this scenario now if, if you're going 120 months you can see we've got a big drop off of revenue the IRR is lower Let's put this back to 84. And um, so we talked about income statement, cat, uh, balance sheet. Balance sheet is just going to show you your cash, value these non current assets, which is charging stations, um, non current assets total, accumulated depreciation, total assets. Your liabilities are just those two loans, optional. Investments, which is uh, equity, owner's equity, retained earnings, and um, then your liabilities and owner's equity is always going to equal the total assets based on the accounting equation. So that is perfect. You've got your cash flow statement as well. This is going to feed your cash flow line on the balance sheet. And this all matches up, and this shows you kind of your, this is almost like a sources and uses, but it's, it's more advanced. You're just seeing it by month over the whole forecast period. Um, you can see on the exit here, exit proceeds, payment down the debt, operational activity. Obviously your taxes are big here because you're selling, so that all nets out. Um, executive summary, this is another high level view of the financials, but you can see everything from revenue all the way down to other cash flow items in one little view. We've also got total active units and total kilowatt hours transmitted up top. Um, you've got your IRR, equity multiple, total ROI of the whole lifetime of the project for the project and for the investor view and owner view, depending on what those this is changed to on the cap table that will affect those numbers. Some charts, revenue EBITDA. We went over the distributions tab, discount cash flow analysis. Um, visuals. So here we got some cool stuff. So total revenue, gross profit, average profit per unit. And let me actually extend this out to 120 months. And let's put, let's deploy some more of these. Uh, maybe we scale down a little bit. Maybe we start doing five a month for a while. Just so you can kind of see the visuals. Okay, so average profit per unit per month. EBITDA, cash flow, total asset versus total liabilities, gross profit, EBITDA, monthly cumulative cash flow. So this one's pretty cool to see when you're actually breaking even on a cash in and out basis. So here's the cash coming in and out. 
we're deploying, deploying, deploying here. We finally make more money than we're spending. And now we're saving back up. We've now broken even here. And now we have cash piling up and the exit. Uh, active chargers by type. So this is a stack column. A lot of these are stack columns uh, that show the total active chargers, which is this top total here. But you're seeing what that is made of between type or level one, level two, and DC fast chargers. So the DC fast are making up the majority of active chargers um, in this scenario. Maximum kilowatts capacity per month by type. So the DC chargers are out of way. You can't even see the other two in this case. Um, same with utilized per month by type. Uh, kilowatt hours utilized. Uh, if we come down here, monthly utilization rate versus average kilowatt hours used per unit per month. So what this says is um, of my total kilowatt hours available, the bar is showing you the percentage that's being utilized. So the other is just downtime. And then this line chart is showing you the average kilowatt hours used per unit per month. So the big DC fast chargers are, are playing a big role in what that number is. Now, as they as the DC fast chargers start to come offline, this goes down because then you're starting to only have your other ones left that are the level one and two. Total subscriber count by tier. So again, we're in this case getting up to 120,000 subscribers made up of these four different uh, tiers. Uh, and then we have kil kilowatt hours utilized, one-time users versus subscribers. And again, another stack chart where you can see um, our one-time users are, are outweighing the subscriber usage a bit. Um, you know, this is what, about 31,000 a month versus 15,000 a month. We have average revenue versus average cost per unit per month. So this is your gross profit margin, the difference between these two. Um, so I'm getting 9,700 revenue uh, dollars per month per unit, and it's costing me eight 6,800 per month per unit. Our profits in the middle there, which would per unit, which would actually be this number up here. See, it's about 2,900. If you see here the difference between these two, uh, 68, 98, that's about 2,900 roughly. Monthly revenue per uh, by subscriber type. So we did total subscribers by tier. Here's showing you the revenue you're getting from these subscribers by tier. We've got monthly revenue, uh, one-time users versus subscribers. So this is similar to the chart above it, but instead of count or I mean kilowatts utilized, this is the actual revenue you're earning from those two different um, revenue streams. And then we finally have percentage of maximum capacity used by type. So these are not adding up to 100% in total. This is just saying, okay, um, type 2 is of the total capacity that type 2 can output. It's using, we're 59% uh, full on those on average. Um, for type 1, we're 27% full of, of what they can use. And then for the DC fast, we're only using 17% of their max. Now these could all be say 80% or 90% or, or or whatever. They don't have to add up to 100% though. This is driven from these columns here. So it's just looking at, okay, these units can produce this much and this is how much that's actually being used by customers. And it's separate for each one. Alrighty, uh, what else do we got here? The monthly detail we kind of already went over. It's just showing you here's how much, you know, our active units. The maximum capacity those units can provide the actual capacity that's being used so this is how much people are plugging in and using these kilowatt hours um, here's our subscriber counts and how much kilowatt hours the subscribers are using and then we can see total kilowatt hours utilized average utilization rate and then we have revenue one-time uh, users so this is based on the kilowatt hours from one-time users up here then we have revenue by subscribers, which is based on the kilowatt hours that they use here. So there's our total revenues. Um, then direct costs, we have cost per kilowatt hour transmitted for um, one-time users. We have the same thing for 
uh, subscribers. Remember, this is just that one time cost for subscribers, which you enter right here in this box. So we're saying 15 cents on average. But for these, we could change them by month and by uh, charger type for the one time users. Uh, we have the, these fixed costs are what we talked about on the OPEX tab, um, cost per unit per month, which is right down here. This is driving those costs right here. So that total per month times the amount of active units. Total direct cost, gross profit, then we have all our uh, corporate overheads happening, staffing, R&D, and EBITDA, loan proceeds, we kind of talked about all this, and then finally we've got CapEx, taxes, and exit proceeds and final cash flow. This running cash position on the monthly details, what's going to define the amount of cash we actually need? And it will be the minimum cash required um, based on the lowest cash position that we get to based on all these different assumptions. And annual details, the same thing as the monthly, but on an annual basis. And we always have checks here to make sure they check. And you could minimize. I've grouped the rows so you can just see high level. There's the whole thing right there, high level. All the main line items, so that's nice to see. Alrighty. Now, if you want to purchase this financial model template simulation, you can go to smarthelping.com in the link below. I will have it posted. So this is kind of part of the renewable energy thing I've been doing where I've done uh, I've done a biogas producer, a wind farm. I've also got a hydroponics model. Now I'm going to add this, which is um, electric vehicle charging stations. It will be in the industry specific bundle. So you can get it if you pay $2.99, it'll come in this whole bundle that includes all of these. It's also going to be in the services industry bundle and i'll put it in the section if you want to buy it individually i think i'm going to price this template at 75 dollars one-time fee so it'll be in this section on the industry specific um financial models tab right here services it'll be right there i'm also going to actually add it into the SaaS since there is an option for subscriptions um i'll put it in the membership models section here but it will be included in this bundle as well. And then obviously it's included in the super smart bundle, which includes the whole entire template library on my site for $9.99. And that includes, you know, we've got well over 200 financial models now of different things for different industries and different uses, a lot of stuff across a lot of different uh, areas, super valuable. Um, Lots of things you can learn, lots of really good logic that I've spent, well, coming up on almost 10 years now of just building stuff every day uh, and going through with clients and just getting very useful financial models. Um, oh, I did want to talk about uh, the PLUS program. Now it's just a one-time fee. It's no longer a subscription service. You pay a one-time fee and you access whatever gets added to this forever you have access to it um, and these are just templates either that I've built from a complete scratch for a client or if it's a template I already have on the site that a client wanted a specific modification for and I'll do that those those templates will be listed here and you can get them um, I haven't done a whole lot in May I've done a lot of client work but not that would be eligible to put into here um, but generally, probably two to five new templates will get added a month to this. So $4.99 one-time fee, and you can access the, these custom models. And if you want to see more on those, you can see this, the spreadsheet update log. I do videos on each of these um, updates, everything that gets added to the, that bundle over time. You can look at in detail there. Alrighty, guys, like and subscribe. We're going to just keep on working on everything. and. Uh, I love doing this, love building models, and uh, take it easy.